What's up guys? In this video, we're going to look at building a command line application using Clojure. So let's get into it. Cool. So the application we're looking at building is going to work something like this, um, where we'll run this script and it will create a password for us. And it will also copy our password to our system clipboard so we can just paste it afterwards. We can also add in a command line argument to make the password longer. Let's say 15 characters. Now it'll generate a longer password. We can also pass through an H tag, well, an H flag, and then this will tell us what options we have. I know what you're thinking. How did I come up with such a unique idea? Well, I guess I just did. So let's get started. I'm just going to close this terminal. I'm going to use CLJNU to create this project. And CLJNU is this repo where all you have to do to create a new project is copy this right here and paste it in a depths.eden file. So Let's make a new directory and I'm just going to call it CLJ new. Then I'm going to CD into CLJ new and then I'm going to open it in VS code. And then I'm going to create a new depths.eden file, paste this so and save it. Then we can go back to the GitHub repo and just copy this line here. Then we can actually close VS code, go back to our terminal and then paste that line in here. And this will create a new project. And I'm going to say on the code again. And I'm going to call this pass gen. Cool. And it's going to create a new project for us. We can CD into that project, open it inside VS Code. And then we can see, let's scaffold it a project for us. And we have some cool aliases. We have one to package this app as an Uber jar. So we can just run closure x uber jar to run this and this will package our app as an uber jar and then allow us to run it just using java cool so you can see it's created passgen.jar and now we can run this using java jar and then we just pass passgen.jar here and it will run the application we can also run the application if we don't want to build a jar every time just going closure capital m lowercase m and then the name of the app so on the code again dot pass gen and it will run hello world also awesome so before we run the REPL, i actually also want to include another dependency here and that's going to be that dependency that uh, showed us the command line options so i'm just going to go back to github and this dependency is called tools well it's called closure tools.cli and we can just copy this here and paste it inside of our devs.eden file Save this and let's start this REPL using Culver. So just go Culver, start a project REPL and connect. Use depths.eden and we don't need to select any of these aliases. And now we should, if we go to source, passgen.clj, be able to run like plus one one. Execute all of these and then execute this and we have our REPL working. So let's get started. Close the file explorer. And let's get rid of this greet function. We don't need it. And then just clear out this main function. And we can just, I don't know, let's just return hello from main for now. And so if we run main, we'll just return hello. Hello. So let's start with creating the password. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to source. I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it password. Actually, just call it password.clj. Open this up, close the file explorer. And we're going to define a function here called generate password and this is going to take in a length and what i want this to do is pull a random character out of a string of characters that we need for our password so i'm going to create a, a, a variable here called available chars and i'm going to get that by reducing over so we take a function and the reduce function takes an accumulator and a value and I'm just going to pass a range to this reduce. So we can go range and I want it to be the value, the ASCII range. So if we go here to our ASCII table, I want to loop over these characters from this exclamation mark all the way to lowercase Z. So we take range from 33 and the last character is 122, but range is non-inclusive. So we'll pass 123. And just to show you what range does, we go range 33 to 123 it'll return a list of numbers from 33 to 122. Essentially what we're gonna do is on that, we're gonna use char. So if we go char 33, it gives us the exclamation mark and 
122 will give us lowercase z. We're going to loop to all of those and reduce that into a long string. Reduce takes in this function. It takes the starting value, which is going to be a blank string. And what we're going to do is we're going to return a string of our accumulated value plus the char of our value. If we evaluate this and then print out available chars, we'll see we have a whole list of characters that we can use to create our password. Awesome. So just get rid of that. So what we want to do is we want to loop over this function until we've reached the length of our password. So we're going to call loop and loop is going to take in a password and we're going to start the password off as blank. And then what we want to do is if the count of our password is equal, so just put equal here to our length, then what we want to do is we want to return the password. Otherwise, what we want to do is we want to recur this function. So run the loop again, and we'll create a new string of password. So this will update this password here, and we'll add a random character from our available chars. So we can get a random character by going random nth, and if we go available chars, it'll give us just a random character every time, and we'll join that random character to our current password. So we go random nth available chars. That actually should be it. So now if we run uh, generate password with the length of 10, we'll get a password of 10. If we say 100, we'll get a password of length 100. And that's pretty much awesome. We could actually put these available chars within this generate password function. And let's actually do that. So I'm going to create a let binding here and say available chars. We don't need that extra thing. And then we can put this loop inside of here and get rid of this define, save, evaluate this, and our generate password should still work. So let's go a thousand this time. Boom, we have a massively long password. Cool, so now we have our password generator. Let's put it into our main function. So I'm gonna go to passgen.clj, and then at the top here, I'm gonna require on the code again, password. I'm gonna require the password generator using referrer, so this generate password function. Now we have that function available in this namespace. And let's just run here, generate password, and pass through, let's say a default value of eight, define main, that doesn't work. And that's because we have to reevaluate this. And now we can run this again. Now if we run our main function, we'll get a password. Awesome, okay, so that's step one done. So now the next thing I want to do is create those functions to copy this password to our system clipboard. And let's do that. So I'm going to create a new file here called clipboard.clj. And now this file is going to be interesting because we're going to have to use quite a bit of Java interrupt to get this working. First thing we're going to need to do is import a Java class. So we go import and we need to import from java.awt.data transfer. We need to import a class called string selection. And if we evaluate that, now we have string selection available. Then we need a function to get our current clipboard. So let's define a function here called get clipboard. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use the thread first macro, and then we're gonna pass through java.awt.toolkit. We're gonna call the get default toolkit function. And then once we have our default toolkit, we wanna get our system clipboard. And then if we evaluate this and we run get clipboard, doesn't work. And it doesn't work because I have an error here where I need a P. Let's evaluate this and then rerun this. And now we're getting our clipboard back. So another thing we can do with Clojure is type hinting to tell Clojure what type we're actually getting back from this function. We are getting back this clipboard class. So we can actually just copy from here. Let me just make sure my face is not in the way. Copy this. And then we prefix it with I don't know what you call this thing, a copy. Save this and reevaluate this and reevaluate this, and we still get our clipboard back. Awesome. Let me just close this. So now we need to actually be able to copy um, text to our clipboard. So I'm going to define a new function here called copy, and it's going to take in some text. Then I'm going to use a let binding here. And now we're going to use this string selection class. So I'm going to call selection. That'll be the result of building a new string selection with our text. And now we can call set contents on our clipboard. So we can just get the clipboard. 
and then we have to pass in our selection and then our selection again. I also want to just return the selection for now so that we can type hint this let binding here. So we just return selection, evaluate this, and it doesn't work. And that's because we actually have to put a period here to make sure that we're creating a new instance. Evaluate this, and now we can go copy and pass hello. If we evaluate this, then we're getting the string selection back. And if we paste, hello is now in our clipboard. So the reason why I wanted to return selection is so we could type hint this selection here. So I'm gonna copy this, and then we can type hint it over here, save this, and we don't need to return the selection anymore. Reevaluate this function, and then we can say hello to, and now if we paste, we get hello to. Cool, and now we can go back to our passgen.clj file and include this copy function. So I'm going to require from on the code again, dot clipboard, I'm gonna require that copy function. So refer, copy. And now we can wrap this in copy. And if we run this function and run this function, we get no return because copy doesn't return anything, but we can now paste our password. Cool, so now we have two steps of our process done. The next thing we need to do is implement our CLI options. So let's do that. So if we go to the tools.cli repo page, we can go to the quick start guide and let's just require let's just copy this require statement. Well, we actually just need this part. So let's copy this and put it into our project. Now we have the pass ops function. Let's copy this um, CLI options definition. And we can edit this. So we don't need a port number. What we do need is a length. So we can change these values to represent that. Port length length and we could say password length and then we'll say the default is eight and the cool thing here is we can have this pass function so this order always um, arguments pass through the command line of strings so this will actually convert the string to an int which is awesome and here we have a validate function and we see that it must be a number between zero and sixty five thousand five hundred thirty six Let's just make it between, I don't know, zero and 100. So it must be a number between zero and 100. Then it has this B argument, which we actually don't need. So I'm just gonna delete this. And we can use the help, the help flag. So I'm gonna delete all of these, save this, execute this, and let's just go back to the example. So if we go back to the example, we can see that the way we use these options is we basically pass our arguments and the CLI options to pass ops and it will do something for us. So let's see what it does. So I'm gonna copy this and underneath this form, I'm just gonna paste this, evaluate this, it doesn't work. And that's because pass ops is not available. So let's evaluate this and then reevaluate this. And now we can run main and see what that gives us. Cool, so it returns us a map and we can see there's an options key and it has the length. If we ran this with like the length flag and change the value, it should be represented here. We can see that we've passed no arguments through and we can see that there aren't any errors. So let's try to see what, hap what this looks like if we run it through the command line. So I'm just gonna open up terminal and then let's run this pass gen function again and then just pass through L of 10. And nothing happens because we actually need to print this out. So let's print line, then run this again. Cool, and we can see what we get printed out. Um, so we're running main function here, so let's remove that. We get uh, options with the length of 10, so that is reflected here, and there's no errors. So if, let me just clear this out, if we run this again with, let's say 101, we should see an error because this validate function would fail. Yep, we have errors, fail to validate, so that works. And let's see what happens if we pass through the H flag. Then we see that now we have a Boolean value for help where it's evaluated to true. So we can use that to basically just return the summary, which will indicate to the user what they need to pass through to the script. Cool, so now we can use this in our main function. So the first thing I wanna do is let's just close this. I wanna create a let binding and arguments. I'm gonna bind it to the value of pass ops when we pass through our args. Now we'll have that map available to us through arguments. I wanna get the options out of our arguments. So options, and it'll just be the key of options from our arguments. And then I also wanna pull out that summary. So we can go summary and get the summary out of our arguments. And now we have pretty much everything we need to finish our CLI. So let's 
put everything inside of our let binding. And the first thing we want to do is we want to check whether that help flag was passed through. So we can go, if we have help in our options, then what we do is we want to print out that summary. So we go print line summary. Otherwise, what we want to do is we just want to finish executing the script. So let's create another let binding here, generated password, and that'll be value of generate password. And we want to pass through the length from our options so we can get the length out of our options. Then we want to copy that password so we can go copy generated password. And then we also want to print that password out so we can go print line generated password. And then we can actually get rid of all of this, close the brackets, evaluate main. And now if I open up terminal again and run this, let's say with a length of 10, we should have a password generated with a length of 10 and we don't wrong number of args pass to pass ops. And that's because we have pass options, the args, but not the CLI options. So let's pass with the CLI options here save this and rerun this. I'm just going to clear this terminal and rerun it. Cool. And then we have generate password cannot be cast to a string. And that's because we're passing the function generate password, not the generated password. So I'm just going to copy that, rerun this again, and hopefully now it works and it works. Cool. So we have a password generated and I can paste it on the command line. Awesome. Let's clear this. Awesome. So we actually nearly finished our project. Uh, we have our command line utility working. I just want to, instead of printing this text in the default uh, terminal text color, I want to print it as yellow. So I'm going to create a function here called print yellow. And I want to pass it the text um, your generated password is, and it will print the generated password afterwards. I've already made this function. So I'm just going to paste it in here. And all it does is it prints the line of our arguments and it prefixes it with the yellow color code. So now if we run this, let me just open this up here. It will now print out our output in yellow. Cool. And it just makes it a bit nicer. So now what we need to do is we need to package this project as an Uber jar and we can do that easily using our depth.edn Uber jar alias like we saw earlier. So let's do that. Just run closure x and pass it through the uber jar profile not uber bar uber jar cool then we see it's built a uber jar called passgen.jar which we'll see here in our file explorer now what we need to do is well now we can run this if we go java jar passgen.jar and we can pass through we can pass through the cli argument of length 15 and it should work your generated password is and we have a password of length 15 and we should be able to paste it which we can that's awesome. But we can't expect the user to run uh, our app with Java all the time. So what we can do is we can install this awesome tool called Graal VM, which will allow us to run this uh, jar file as like a command line utility. I'm going to put the links for everything I'm doing in the description below. Um, but you're going to need a tool called Jabber. I already have Jabber installed. And once you have Jabber installed, you'll need to install Graal VM using this command. So this Jabber installs Graal VM Community Edition Java 11 version 20.3.0. Then we need to use it. So we just paste this in and now it's using Graal VM. Then we need to install um, native image, which will package the app. Once we have native image, we can run native image and we pass through our jar file, which is passgen.jar. Then we want to name our executable. So I'm going to give it the name password generator. And this takes some time to package. So give it a moment. Cool. So once it's packaged, we can just um, clear this out. And then we see password generator is in our file explorer. So we can now run that password generator. If we don't pass any arguments, it will just generate a password of eight characters and we'll have that copied to our clipboard. If we pass through H for help, we'll see our summary printed out. And if we pass through a length of say 16, we'll get a longer password. And that's how you can make a command line interface with Clojure. I think this is really cool. This is just the basics, um, but I think we covered a fair amount of stuff in here. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Uh, I'm trying to get to 1000 subs. So if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, please subscribe because I'm trying to get to 1000 subs. Uh, I don't think there's any more reason to subscribe than that. Cheers. Bye.